So I'm going to kind of walk you through a few things uh, and then we'll get into a few more things. So again, I'm Ms. Johnson. Uh, Mr. Hansel will be on a little bit later talking about Albert I.O. And if you have any questions, feel free to email whsedtech at eansisd.net. So, so other resources that we have in addition to Albert I.O. And, and all of those things, we've done a webinar on time management, note taking, test prep, you know, uh, digital distractions, things like that. We did have a question come in earlier that said, are students getting any of this? And the answer is yes, but not always at every level. Um, we have done, I, I've spoken to every single freshman here about note taking um, and, and digital organization. I have, uh, Chris and myself, spoken to every freshman here on concentration, digital distraction, social media, a little bit of time management. So as, as these things are coming up, and also the counselors have a great, you know, kind of speaker series as well. I think next year we'll probably end up on that speaker series and we can kind of go through those, but this is kind of something new that we've been uh, incorporating. So yes, this will continue to be a thing um, of us kind of sharing these and also building it into uh, working with students on this. When we ask students, you know, what are the most important, you know, kind of study materials, it was in-class reviews, practice exams, tests, and that's why that Albert I.O. stuff is so important because those practice exams are just really, really valuable tools. The other thing I just wanted to mention is, and it's in the link in the chat, but if not, it'll be um, on our site as well. And this is in a full blown um, for courses. This is all gathered from teachers and they are study skills for multiple courses here. And, and some of them are more specific than just like, hey, study every night. You know, so it's, hey, study these terms or look at this packet or, you know, use the Quizlet decks or whatever the case may be for the course. So I, I want to encourage you to take a look at that and obviously share with your student. And that's already a blog post on Healthy Chaps. And then the last one, these four apps. So Quizlet, quite a few students either use teacher decks or build their own. And the second one there is flashcards. The benefit of using that is it has that SRS component, which basically means that they can flag things on how well they understand something. And then it'll go through, you know, so many. Um, or it'll bring up ones that they flagged as only knowing 25% more often, obviously, than ones that they know 75%. So that's just kind of a, other tools that are out there. Um, so this one said, I can identify what I know and don't know. I review lecture notes soon after class. I begin studying for an exam from the first week material is assigned or covered in a lecture. And these are things that are really important. And these are things that we also saw with the study skills, um, that entire webinar. So. The other general test prep, and most likely I'll be writing a blog post for Healthy Chaps on this as well, so you'll have the links and resources and the slide deck because apparently we didn't have it the entire time. Uh, general test prep. So things that are important, you know, keeping a daily and weekly study schedule. That was something I mentioned in the time management one, and I actually have a form uh, that's available for that. Take good notes, review them. Note the format, you know, when you're studying for a test, if you're studying for multiple choice, you're going to study differently than if you had to write, you know, an essay. Another thing, this is why the studying apps come in so helpful or are so helpful is predicting test questions, creating quizzes for your notes, things like that. Something else that came up is typically rereading the text tends to be inefficient. Um, it, it takes a lot of time to reread all of the text. A lot of times it's more important to, you know, look over your notes, look over packets that, you know, teachers have given you, things like that. Um, rereading tests. Now, on day of, day of exam, things that are important, rereading the test directions, looking for clues, you know, all those sort of things that we teach. And then memory dumps are really important. Just that idea of, okay, everything I've studied, you know, let me take a second and jot down a bunch of things so I don't forget them as I start taking the test. And there was just a few more things. I know, I know I suffer with this and I know that many other people do just that, that test anxiety. Thankfully, I don't have to take tests all that often anymore. Um, <laughs> but these are some things to keep in mind. So, you know, keeping organized, keeping a schedule. Again, the webinar we did on time management will hopefully be really, really helpful for that. The other thing, and, and again, it's obvious, you know, you always see this, but it's, it's just, it's worth, you know, kind of reminding everybody, you know, get a good night's sleep, drink a lot of water, exercise, um, don't eat greasy foods and caffeine close to that time frame. It just makes you kind of more stressed out. 
And then, interestingly enough, there is a, I don't know if he's a national um, memory champion or the world memory champion, I'm not sure. But uh, something he was talking about is blueberries. I actually did a little bit of research on that. So blueberries tend to um, help with memory. And so it's something nice. I like blueberries, so that's kind of cool. You can Google blueberries in memory. There are actually uh, articles and research out there. I'm not just making it up, I swear. So uh, those are a few things on test anxiety. And then I just wanted to remind you, so if you've missed any of these or if this is like the first one that you've tuned into, we have webinars on all of these different topics. These are actually uh, blog posts. So what I typically do is after we've done a webinar, I will write a blog post up, which is not you know verbatim of what we said, but it's got a lot of the links, the resources. It'll have a link to the webinar as well, have some you know more information for you. So we have one on how to organize your digital notebook, and that one was um, from the fall study skills basic study skills and then we have one on vocabulary that was actually from uh, one of our world language teachers another one on journaling another one on managing digital distractions that was very recent and that study tip bundle one where it has a huge pdf from all of our teachers that's also available so the very last thing i want to mention before i kick it back over to chris and he does a live demo for you is the additional ones that we have. So we've already done one on time management and calendars that is already available for you um, with the handout. So you'll actually have like a kind of a guide if students want to use that for managing their time over the month. Last week there was one, um, Chris Hansen and Carolyn Foote, our librarian, did one on resource vetting and fake news. And now you're getting assessment prep and then in May, we're going to do one on transitioning your senior. So those, um, you know, obviously 12th graders who are moving on to whatever they're moving on, talking about how they're going to transition their accounts, you know, anything that they've created over the years, and then also some tips for different types of tools that they might want to use in college, um, whether they be on the laptop or iPad or whatever the case may be. So we wanted to kind of give you a heads up on those. All right, I'm going to kick it over to Chris. That's kind of my spiel, and now he's going to do a live demo of Albert I.O., which you may have heard at. If you haven't, it's pretty stellar. So, one minute. All right, thank you, Lisa. <laughs> um, so, thank you, everybody that's joining us today, and I hope you're getting some good tips. Uh, there is also, I posted a link while Lisa was chatting uh, to our YouTube channel that has a couple of more webinars that we have done that aren't necessarily in that blog post. Uh, one on common sense, uh, using commonsense.org uh, for social media and digital citizenship. And then of course the one she talked about with Carolyn Foote last week, fake news research and resource vetting. So what I'm gonna launch into, and uh, Lisa, if you'll tell me, I want to make sure this transfers over. What I'm going to launch into is actually two areas of test prep uh, that your students can access, that, that you can also access. Uh, in particular, this one you can access, which is collegeboard.org. So College Board has its own website that it does upload um, SAT prep and AP prep. So I'm going to go into this SAT. We good? Yeah. Awesome. So I'm going to go into this SAT right now. And when I go into here, I can go into practice for the different SAT. And um, so basically what this links to is it links to Khan Academy. So if you've never been to Khan Academy, I'm going to jump over here into Khan Academy. Uh, Khan Academy was started by a man named Saul Khan. He was... Uh, basically making videos for his nephews, I believe, for college math courses, and it is now funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and he has expanded from just math to a lot of different content areas. You can get on there. It's free for everybody, and basically they have AP, several AP courses, a uh, quick list of AP courses. I misplaced, but I'll just scroll down here and show you. Uh, so as we look down here, uh, there's AP history, there is um, 
SAT prep, and I'm just going to kind of jump into here. As you can see, it saves what I've been doing, so I'm going to jump into this SAT math practice. So what Khan Academy does is it loads instructional videos onto here. Give it just a second to load. Uh, he creates instructional videos in these SAT preps and the AP course preps. He actually goes over release test questions and analyzes what the correct answer is and what the incorrect answers are. So it's a really good uh, free tutorial-based uh, practice site. Uh, Khan Academy has many features on it, such as badging. Um, as you can see, I do have a practice button, so you can go on and take full tests, and this is all linked into College Board as well. So you see that official SAT practice, uh, this link's in here. Um, one thing we noticed about our students in the past is many students seek outside tutorials, uh, third-party vendors who uh, give them test prep, and we wanted to give a kind of equal chance for all our students on campus this year. So we looked into some tools and we settled on a pilot with a company called albert.io. Uh, so currently every student that, actually every student enrolled in a pre-AP AP course or are a junior level student at Westlake High School, it does have the accessibility of getting on to albert.io. AP courses are managed by the AP teachers individually and the SAT ACT prep, I've actually loaded all of our junior students uh, that are gonna be taking that, those upcoming tests into some certain classes. So they've received email notification that they are loaded into a class and they can access thousands of practice questions. And Albert IO actually gives them feedback on not only the correct answer, but also what answers aren't correct. So I'm gonna kind of show you around the site it is web-based, so this is not an iPad app. They can access it through uh, Google Chrome or Safari. As they go in here, and again, they will need to go ahead and accept the course through their email. So have them search through their uh, school, their EANS ISD email. If they do not see the invite code or the invite email, possibly it was deleted, uh, please email me at WHS EdTech, and Lisa will post that, that uh, email address, WHS EdTech at EansISD.net, and we'll get, get you set up. Is Albert I.O. only for AP tests? Uh, the question, the question came through, is Albert I.O. only for AP tests? It's a great question. I'm going to show you what is open to our courses and remind you that students' access is based on their teachers. So students do not have full access to the site. They have access to classes they are enrolled in. So for example, I have classes that I've created. And as you can see, I have some demo classes. I've been training teachers on this, so I create a demo class for each one of those. But these SAT, ACT courses, these are all by last name. And as you can see, I've enrolled all of our junior level uh, students in here for SAT and ACT prep. And uh, not a whole lot have accepted, although more than before. So example, in this A through C, there are probably 120 to 140 students enrolled in this course, and 22 have accepted it. So there's a lot of students out there, possibly your students, uh, that have not accepted uh, the enrollment in here. Again, if there's any way I can help with that, um, then I will be able to. For the rest of our students, freshman, sophomore, and senior, uh, it is based on what courses they are in. So let me just launch into these subjects over here. And you'll notice when I click subjects, I go straight into the advanced placement. So every one of our advanced placement courses is covered by Albert I.O. in terms of prep. Uh, we have been marketing this to our AP teachers as well as our pre-AP teachers. So let me go into AP Biology right here and kind of show you what a question set would look like. So if a teacher has logged on and invited their students into a class and tied the AP Biology subject to the, to the class, they will be able to access this. If a, if a teacher has not, if a student has not, or if a teacher has not created the class, I can actually do that on the back end. So if, again, if you will email me at that email that Lisa will be posting in the chat, uh, if you can't see the chat for any reason, it's whsedtech at eansisd.net, or you can email chanson, H-A-N-S-O-N, at eansisd.net. Also, if you have a uh, sophomore or freshman level student that's taking the SAT test, please email me and I will get them added to those courses as soon as you email me. So it's not a problem. We've already paid for the, the seats and so we can get them access to that as well. We wanna make sure all of our students are covered. 
So in these question sets as I go in, again, students can see this when they're added to a class. Uh, teachers can assign question sets. Uh, we have encouraged our teachers not to assign based on summative assessments, meaning don't give these as a test because students are able to access these question sets. So it could make the, the test results invalid, but more for practice. In several of the AP courses that teachers have been implementing this since the fall, we have seen 10 to 15 percent increases on their test averages in class. So teachers will assign question sets based on the unit and they are seeing huge huge gains and this is uh, some of these are semester level courses so they're able to compare to last semester when they weren't using Albert IO. So great results from what we're seeing so far. Of course we'll take all the data from all our test results uh, towards the end of the school year and into the summer, analyze that and then base that on our decision if we're going to continue with Albert IO. From what I can see now, it looks pretty good and it's got a lot of support at campus level and at district level. So let me just click into here. So I'll go into nat natural selection and show you an example of a question and what your students will be seeing. So here's an example of a question. I'm going to go ahead and click view as a student so you can see exactly what they'll be seeing. <clears throat> so as I go in here, I see several questions over here. Of course, the E's and the M's are rankings, easy, medium, and then we do have difficult rankings, just not in this particular question set. As I scroll down, you can see this is an AP level question. These questions are actually created by teachers all over the nation. They contract with Albert IO, and every time we use a question of a teacher's, they get paid a small percentage. Uh, and so there is a financial incentive for teachers to create good questions, as well as a financial incentive by Albert IO to create good questions for test prep. So all these questions are vetted and before they are placed on the platform. So I'm going to go ahead and click practice and I have no idea what the answer to this question is. So I'm just going to guess just to show you how this looks. There is an elimination tool that students can use that we will eliminate. Uh, they can go in and eliminate an answer just like you would mark off an answer on a paper test. And so I'll choose B and see how I do. So I was incorrect, of course. The answer uh, to the choice to it is D. So they get instant feedback when they answer a question. Uh, I prefer it this way. If Albert I.O. waited till the end of those 19 questions to give them the feedback, chances are our students would not go through each of those questions. So this in this way they can look at it. And if you'll notice, it not only tell me tells me why D is correct, it tells me why the other three answer choices are incorrect. So this is great for our students to go through and analyze uh, test questions for content, but also test taking strategies as well. You can see the standards tied in at the bottom. And then of course, uh, this, this data right here shows students who is answering what. So 75% of students who are on the Albert IO platform have answered D, whereas 11% have answered C. So it gives students a little feedback of how other students are answering as well. So if they get something wrong, uh, they are able to see how other students are answering. So the, a question came through, can sophomores join Albert IO or do they need an invite from a teacher? They do need an invite from a teacher to access the full platform. Uh, again, Westlake High School has paid for seats for all of our students. So um, as I put in all the juniors based on uh, the advice from administration on who will be taking the test. If you do have a student who will be taking this test, please email me at whsedtech, E-D-T-E-C-H, at eansisd.net, so that I can add your student onto my courses. Again, I have those classes that are set up for that SAT, ACT prep. Once I add them on there, they get the email. They will have full access to all the test prep materials for SAT and SAT. And that's that's not just the major test, that's the subject level test as well, if anybody out there has a student that is taking a subject level test. In terms of functionality, uh, many students are already using this. Uh, Lisa Johnson and myself do have open office hours daily and especially during lunch, lunch when students are more available, that students can come by and get help to access these platforms. If students are in an AP course and they are not on this platform, please have them reach out to their teacher or please email me and I will reach out to their teacher. And if there's any difficulties of getting that class started or getting them on the platform, I will just create a individual class for your students so we can add them on there. And they can get this prep, uh, this test prep before those tests come up. If there's any questions in general, then uh, please email us. I'll also be, Lisa's gonna run back over here and say a few things in closing. 
uh, but I will also be able to answer any questions on the, the uh, message chat. Okay, thanks a lot for tuning in today. And again, email whsedtech at eansisd.net if you have any questions about Albert IO or Khan Academy.